Taylor Beck and you, Rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Today is day four. Day four of uh, this period called Svirata Ome. What is Svirata Ome? It is a spiritual pilgrimage that we, we go on uh, from uh, uh, the holiday of Passover and takes us all the way up to the holiday of the Jewish holiday of Passover, the Jewish holiday of uh, Shavuos or Shavuot, depending on, on what, what type of... Uh, what type of uh, uh, Jew you are? <laughs> Depends how, 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 you know, how you say it. Now, the, the the holiday of Shavuot is when we commemorate the uh, revelation at Mount Sinai, right? So it's a very spiritually potent time when uh, uh, incredible growth, like right? incredible growth in whatever you want to do, is possible, right? And uh, uh, so this is, I think, the second year I've I've done something during this period. Uh, uh, you know, because it's a, it's a good idea. It's a good idea to utilize this. It's basically if you put a a, a microscopic amount of effort into something, the good Lord uh, 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 then puts his finger on the scales, right? Gives you a bit of fulcrum action, and you have and you and you have uh, uh, a growth that you wouldn't necessarily be able to have. And you can do this. In whatever area of, of, of life you want, it's, it's recommended in spiritual things, which is which is where I'm focusing on. So what we're looking at is, where did it go? We're looking at this. Now, I, this used to be a website. Yeah, I, I know this used to be a website because I, I I think I made it, right? I can't remember it. So it, I think I made it. This book, The Six Constant Mitzvahs. Six Constant Mitzvahs, are, a mitzvah is a commandment from, from the, uh, uh, the Old Testament. And it's uh, uh, these commandments are designed to create a worldview where, where you have uh, this incredible connection to God, right? This incredible and constant connection to God, which does mean oftentimes you're going to get kicked in the balls by God, right? <laughs> I, I don't think I'm really selling this well, but like the closer a connection you have to God, the more uh, uh, the more problems God has to give you. So you can, uh, uh, you know, overcome them, right? Like now, if you see something terrible, you go, oh, well, this is all the will of God and everything's good and you're happy about it, then then God's got to give you something, something even more terrible before you go, holy crap, yeah, that's terrible. I mean, I, I guess, I guess that's why uh, the good Lord uh, blessed us with the Jodie Whittaker Christian or Doctor Who. If you're not a Doctor Who fan, if you're a Doctor Who fan, don't, don't go check it out. It's awful. It's absolutely awful. Much like the, the current Star Trek and, uh, and Star Wars, all awful and dc comics and everything's awful everything is awful uh, uh apart from things that are good <laughs> but anyway anyway so uh this is a uh, uh a work site so yeah this used to be be, uh, be a website right where you do a bit this book every day and it, it builds into this this uh um really holistic three-dimensional worldview which again makes you have a greater connection with God. I mean, if you believe in that side of thing, I personally do. I guess if you're listening, you might do too, right? So yesterday we talked about um, previous attempts in 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 famous in in the Jewish world to increase the connection to God, right? So there was this guy called uh, uh, Shabbos Svi. Uh, who who was uh, uh, a false messiah, right? It, really, it was a bad time for the Jews. It was like 15th century, uh, uh, and and they were there was these huge massacres, massacres going across Europe. It was not. Listen, basically, you if you throw a dart into a a, a map of history, it's going to be a bad time for the Jews, mostly, right? Mostly. But uh, at this time, it was a bad time in Europe, and there was all these uh, uh, pogroms and riots, and hundreds of thousands of people were killed. It was a big deal, right? Right. This guy, Shabbat Shalom, comes up and everything. He's a Messiah. Oh, yeah, he's my, he, I, you must be the real Messiah, Lord. I've followed a few. If I, I think I quoted that yesterday as well. <laughs> uh, uh, and then he turned out not to be. The 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 Sultan uh, uh, said, "Convert to Islam, or we're going to kill you." He's like, "Well, I guess I'm converting then." And 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 it really shattered the 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 Jewish world in Europe. Like there was all the people really believed it. Like they really totally believed he was the Messiah, right? And he was going to bring redemption. Uh, 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 and then they did it, and people were crushed, right? Absolutely crushed. So from out, out that grew the the Hasidic movement. Uh, uh, the Hasidic movement is an is a movement. To connect uh, uh, Jewish practice to one's emotion, right? That that was really the goal of it. 
uh, it was kind of looked down on by a lot of people because they felt it's somewhat similar to this Shabba size three situation. Uh, and also, I just think they don't like they they they, they weren't really fun, even though they was looked down on from like my my own personal group, the uh, Miss Nugdim. So they developed something else to uh, connect one's uh, uh, one's emotions to to their service of God called the Musa movement, right? So that that's where we're up to, and, and they didn't really get on. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? They created uh, movements to uh, uh, get closer to God, uh, uh, and, and they ended up not liking each other. How much more Jewish can you get? Right? <laughs> that sounds pretty darn Jewish. So anyway, so we're, and we're learning from this book. It used to be a website. As I said, it used to be, be a website. Uh, uh, which I'm pretty sure I built, but it's offline, which is a bummer. I was going to throw it up on screen over here, but what can you do? I'll, t I'll just read it to you. Buy, you can buy a copy of the book, or you can just listen to me. Either, either way, either way is good. Before we get into it, like, share, subscribe, comment, Substack. All those things are awesome. Friggin' awesome. I, I, I'm very happy for all those things to happen. Substack is my email newsletter. Uh, uh, also have a paid one. Nothing going on in it, but I'm still asking for money. It's just the way it is, baby. It's just the way it is. Uh, when my computer gets better, which I think I'll get to get a new one, uh, 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 I'll be able to do more work because this is freaking nightmare right now. Let me tell you, why is one of these things that God's sending you to kick, you know, to 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 kick me in the balls? Okay, so fine. So uh, this is the last day of the introduction, and and then from tomorrow we start actually getting to the actual commandments themselves and going inside them, right? So uh, looking back at these two movements, the Musa and the, uh, and the uh, Hasidus movement, uh, through the clear perceptive history, uh, through the clear perceptive of, uh, what does that mean? The clear per perspective, oh, not perceptive, but the clear perspective history, we were able to see that they were nothing less than lifesavers for, uh, for Jew the Jewish world. History has shown that far better than uh, other segments uh, have shown that far, uh, far than, far better than the other segments of the Jewish people. Hasidim were able to deal with the uh, um, the temptations, the confusion that came with the the Enlightenment. Right? You know, Enlightenment is when they is when people just started saying it's the science. Right? They can't be really. It's the science. Science is. You know, it, actually, if you. It, the the more you know of the science, the more religious people tend to get. You know, I used to know this guy called Dr. Gerald Schroeder. Wrote a very good back book called Genesis and the Big Bang, basically dealing with how the scientific age of the universe is one thing, and the biblical version of it is much less, much less. And he came up with a pretty darn clever answer. Basically, he said the first six days of creation are are told from the center of the universe, and then uh, right after that, we we move to Earth. And if you do the math or the, the theory of it relatively, you, you get the age of the universe. So, which was quite quite impressive, really quite quite impressive. Uh, um, yeah, uh, history showed that far better this, uh, segment uh, uh, of the Hasidim were able to deal with the uh, the Enlightenment, you know, basically the the Industrial Revolution and the big change of the world that happened around the nineteenth century. And the many isms that became popular in the 19th century and early 20th century. When we look back at the development of Judaism in America, we find Hasidim uh, were able to strengthen many areas of uh, observance that are floundered until their arrival. Their eternal bond uh, to, to Judaism formed the bedrock of their uh, unwavering commitment to uh, biblical values. And, and allow them to succeed in building Jewish life where others have failed. Yeah, I think basically they're saying, like, you know, if you do not connect on a visceral, emotional level to whatever your worldview is, as soon as you have anything come up that to, to make you look the other way, you're probably going to, right? You're probably going to. We've got a, uh, there's a large section of ultra-Orthodox uh, Jews that live in Israel called the the Haredim, right? And they're kind of like the Amish. They, they, uh, they uh, separate themselves from modern society as as completely as they can. Also, they got quite a bit of disdain from anybody who doesn't do it, which isn't very nice. But uh, uh, so often, so often, like the, the the people from that world, as minute they go for a walk in the secular world, they're like, yeah, get rid of this thing. I'm done, baby. Yeah, I mean, really, it's, it's I think, you know, you, uh, listen, they, they, they say there's 70 different uh, uh, ways to approach uh, one's, one's uh, religious, uh, uh, Jewish religious uh, uh, observance. I, I, I think you should be able to cope with mostly. But anyway, the people who were able to cope with these things were the people who were connected on, on an emotional level, which shows you the importance of it. 
Uh, in the non hasidic world, uh, uh, Jewish world, most of the uh, institutions that exist, they were founded and led by associates of the Muslim movement. That's the other one, the other thing. Uh, for example, uh, yeshivas are like blah, blah, blah. Just going to give you like yeshivas and rabbis. You're not interested, trust me. Uh, clearly, the emotional involvement in, in um, Torah, observe, biblical observance, uh, that was the key in, in, uh, un, uh, underly in the underlying principles of the two movements. And the key was uh, uh, brought the survival of uh, uh, religious Judaism, right? We, we were going to get like, we weren't going to survive without that. Uh, despite all the uh, existential and spirit spiritual threats at, uh, to our nation in modern times. Uh, in, our, uh, in our study of the, the six constant commandments, six constant mitzvahs, we will find the primary principle behind these, uh, these commandments is, the, is harmonious with the uh, principles of both the Hasidus and, the, and Musa. I think he's just trying to... Okay. You know what I think he's trying to do now? Look, this book is a little... Jews, generally speaking, when, when, when you start talking about emotion and connecting to emotions, they go, hey, 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 let's calm down there, Sparky. Ah, this sounds a bit fruity to me. Not sure I'm on board for this, right? So, uh, um... So basically, I think he's trying. He's he's, he's trying trying to justify. Again, Christians, generally speaking, are much better at dealing with with like accepting miracles and anything like that. Jews, yeah, they're like, yeah, well, yeah, we got to look at the the slide rule. And, and, and I speak from knowledge, mate. I speak from knowledge. Uh, uh, um, I have to say, if it sounds like I don't like my people, I really, really do. <laughs> right? I don't, I don't I want to be uh, 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 disparaging, right? Uh, in a study of blah, 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 uh, these commands require us to develop an emotional bond with God. That is the point of this. Emotional bond with God and the Bible, right? His vehicle for uh, um, having a, f a, a completely fulfilled life, right? Uh, and history has proven that it's not enough to try and live up to uh, uh, wholesome, uh, wholesome lives without uh, this emotional bond. Judaism, contrary to popular belief, is not a religion predicated on solely on laws and actions. It's emotional. Uh, it's an emotional bond uh, to God and the Bible uh, that is vital in context uh, for our continued existence as a nation for our own spiritual fulfillment and growth. I get it, this seems very, very similar to the born again thing. Like you know, it's like. This, this, it, having an incredible connection, right? An emotional, visceral connection with God, right? That's the, that seems to be the bottom line. Today, our connection to uh, uh, Judaism and, and the Bible... Uh, wait, what's this? Where do, I, where do I read up to here? I just look at my notes. Uh, oh, we've got, fair, yeah, we've got fair, a fair way to go. Uh, 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 damn, one second. Uh, is being challenged by issues similar to those that plagued, uh, that plagued the world, the, the religious world, at the creation of the uh, Hasidic and the Musa movement. Jews throughout the world, and particularly those in Israel, are reminded uh, once again, um, uh, was it, Haim Am Dad Yishakain, you are a nation that will dwell in solitude, right? It says that in. Bamidbar. What's Bamidbar in, in English? Uh, okay, so Genesis is Gen a breach of Genesis. Shema is Exodus. Bikra is Leviticus. Bamidbar is. How are they called Bamidbar? Not, not, not. Uh... What the hell is it? Bamidbar. Deuteronomy is Devarim. What is Deuteronomy? There's two of them. Uh, numbers. Ah, oh, is it Numbers? Yeah, must be numbers, right? Numbers twenty three nine. Israel was castigated time and again uh, by over, uh, uh, overwhelming majority of nations of the world. Uh, Anti-Semitic attacks are on the rise in, uh, in the world, and uh, apparently, uh, and apparently, rethinking the pledge never again. It's so loudly proclaimed when these horrors of the Holocaust were revealed after a brief half century respite. Many Jews are feel, uh, feel unsafe. Listen, and this was written. When did this come out? This was like 2010, something like that. Dude, you should have seen what happened in the next 10 years. Do I do the, the, the publication date? I'm just scanning through it. 2009, right? This was written in 2009. Man. <laughs> well, again, well, listen, I think all people of faith are kind of backed into a corner right now, aren't we? Um, we all feel reasonably unsafe, right? Uh, uh, when we say, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
does having a pee pee make you a boy? <laughs> you know, like, and then we all feel pretty unsafe when we say things like that. Uh, although the era, uh, the era of pre and post World War Two isms may be uh, over, our generation is faced with, with uh, moral, moral and spiritual challenges that no generation could could have envisioned in the worst nightmares. Again, this was written, what was it, 13 years ago? Mate, you should have seen what's going to happen. It's, I mean, I mean, a good, good sign it didn't work out well. The website's down, okay? Uh, he allowed, uh, uh, where was it? Uh, where are we going? Uh, although, blah, 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 blah. Uh, instead of causing people to abandon Judaism in favor of some intellectual movement or another, the uh, the evil inclination, we call it the Yetzirah Hara, the evil inclination did, uh, as it did in previous generations, today uh, has adopted a different tactic. Uh, he allows us to retain... Uh, outwardly uh, pious appearance while uh, distracting us from from God and 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 the Bible in the most insidious ways. Instead of appealing to our intellect, he appeals to our emotions, attempting to fill our time with diversions uh, that will leave us with no time to focus on our true purpose in the world. Well, that that's certainly true, right? That's certainly true. It was said that uh, uh, the. Uh, the evil inclination for idolatry was taken out the world about 2,000 years ago, right? And that was a big one, right? Most of the Bible is a polemic against idolatry, right? Uh, uh, and the uh, uh, it, was, it is said, somebody came up with the idea that it was replaced by nothingness. Like, people like doing nothing now. Like, they like staring in front of TV, right? They, they like staring into space, like staring at their phones, right? Nothingness. This drive to do nothing is, 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 you know, is what replaced it. Um, bear with it. The evil occasion succeeds when he turns our religious service into rote. Ah, that is true. So you probably don't have this so much in Christianity, but we have a lot of religious or, or, you know, observance to do, right? You have a lot of things to do, right? And it's very easy for it to become you do it brainlessly. Well, like, like we go to, I pray three times a day in services, right? I just came, I actually just came home from the, 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 the afternoon service, right? It's about 15, 20 minutes long, not, not long, right? But uh, 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 it's so easy, right? It's so easy to go blah, 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 blah. Just say the words without thinking. But if you have that emotional connection, then you're actually talking to God, and it's a much more powerful, uh, uh, much more powerful experience. Uh, so anyway, I feel, uh, uh, this uh, the going through the motions is very unsatisfying and leaves us empty. Observance uh, of uh, religious observance uh, uh, in the in in a way that lacks feeling and depth uh, becomes frustrated us instead of providing us with joy. Uh, as it's meant to, when when that happens, we start looking at shortcuts in our in our service of God, right? So let, let me know know in the comments if if you if you have a challenge like that, you you find the your religious observers just becoming rote, right? Just becoming you do you do it but uh, automatically. Uh, now more than ever, we must find ways to infuse the our uh, religious service with emotion and feeling to live for the Bible and for the commandments uh, and not just do them, right? Which is, that's the point of it. And when you do that, you have this really close connection with God, right? That just happens automatically. Uh, aim high, achieve greatness is the last, is the last uh, heading. Uh, some may feel the level of spiritual perfection discussed in this work is beyond us. It, yeah, it's not, okay? It's certainly not beyond us to try, right? Yeah, always aim high. Uh, so the work is beyond us that it is better to present these uh, these commandments in a down to a practical form. Uh, we contend that they should be presented in a pristine, undiluted undilu form uh, for two reasons. Again, again, they're talking to Jews and not the Christians are like, yeah, OK, let me do it. Really? <laughs> so, uh, uh, first, the famous teaching of the Hijra states, uh, nothing stands in the way of desire. That is true. Right. If you want something. And you want it on a primal level. It's not just you thinking you want it. You want it on a primal level. This thing called ruts on. Uh, uh, oftentimes, you get it, right? It, it, <laughs> that's something I've lived with all my life. Uh, uh, that's a real truth. Um, is often, uh, that statement also understood that means if a person has a strong enough desire to do something, nothing will prevent him from succeeding. This is obviously not true because many people fail to achieve their desires. No, uh, it, it, the, uh, this uh, holy book, the Imre Amis, interprets it slightly differently. 
Uh, indeed, we are not always capable of uh, executing our desires. Well, ain't that the truth, baby? <laughs> Have you seen my computer of late? Yeah. No, we're not not able to do that. But nothing can obstruct us from uh, desiring something, from trying to attain lofty goals. Yes, it is difficult, even too difficult. But why uh, didn't you even want to succeed? That's really what it is. Like you might, what you, you know. You might not make it, right? You might set yourself a goal and you might not make it, especially if it's a spiritual goal, right? You may not make it, but you to want it. That's the goal. That's what you want, right? Even if you fail, if you want it, you have succeeded, right? And you do that by creating a this emotional and in, intellectual uh, uh, um, worldview, which we're going to be talking about. Uh, by discovering the two dread, the depth and be uh, beauty of affection, we will uh, at least aspire to it. Uh, more, if we limit ourselves by setting our sights on um, uh, mediocrity, we can never achieve more than that. That is so true. That's so true. If we uh, aim for greatness, we can hope to achieve uh, higher levels than anyone would, would have anticipated. True. Some uh, uh, some levels of perfect faith, love of God, and fear of God uh, that will be discussed are difficult to attain. Yeah, don't let that slip you, mate. Uh, but when we realize that by applying the principles of the six constant command, these six constant mitzvahs, these constant commands in our lives, we can make each moment, uh, uh, each moment we spend in this world meaningful, enjoyable, and fulfilling. We can take the time to study uh, and apply uh, each commandment, ascending the ladder to two, true spiritual perfection, rung by run. Yeah, this is not a one-day job, right? This is a 50-day a work uh, uh, work assignment uh, um, that 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 you should do many times over, right? Do <laughs> do many times over. Uh, uh, you know, listen, it's uh, uh, it, we're, we, we're out to climb, uh, you yeah, know, a very very high hill, right? But hopefully, you know, at the top of it, we'll, we 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 will find God. Hopefully, that hill will be Mount Sinai. Come come back tomorrow as we actually break into the first of these uh, six constant missiles. My name is Philip Beck, and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!